It appears that a man in his 20s may have been shot in the face. Witnesses describing possibly hearing as many as seven rounds going off. The brush is extremely dry. It's brittle. It cracks in your hands. But Keith had a favor. He said he wanted a pizza, my friends. Oh, you just enjoy that. It's not going to be an easy prospect. You're going to want to get home probably as soon as possible because that snow's been falling at a pretty high rate. Right now, water levels are about one foot above flood stage, and they're expecting it's going to crest on Friday. They've got DJs, they've got music, and they've got a lot of people intensely watching. But if you ask soccer fans who came out to this game, they say today was about much more than just winning. It was about saying goodbye to a cherished player. This is the stuff that you're going to be seeing, and this is one of the hardest hit areas because it's just over there where that water treatment facility is. They raised over $100,000 in 2013. They're going to be open this weekend, so make sure you come on by, make a difference. By the way, you are beautiful. Oh, oh. oh. for now, we are live in Walling for Josh Scheinblum. Josh, it. you are a gentleman. Firefighters say there are things that you can do to help keep your home safe from heavy snow. All you have to do is make sure you have a snow rake. I knew when I was sent to this event that there would be a lot of interesting things going on. But yeah, I would say that this is certainly one of the most interesting motorcycle rallies I've ever seen. But I also forget to mention that it's a great place to bring your significant other. Josh. Thanks, Josh. It is going to be certainly a great time when all of this gets started. Did you notice any crackling or anything yesterday? No, because it's all the end, on, on the other side of the building. The whole back fell down, or wall in the back fell down. A downtown building in Meriden is crumbling. Excuse me, anybody that lives at 80 or 82 East Main Street, yeah. please go to the Salvation Army. And those that live and work here are angry more wasn't done to stop it from happening. But there's always something going on in, inside there. You know, water leaks, build, um, apartments falling down, all kind of stuff. From across the street, residents worry about their extended family. We just talked to animal control and gave animal control the names of our animals that are still in there. Entrepreneurs for their businesses. I just hope they um, let us in so we can get our stuff out. At least if we get our stuff I could find somewhere else, because that don't make no sense. Officials with the fire department say they're not sure why the building partially collapsed, but they add they have expressed concerns about this building before. We've been working with the building owners to have an engineering study done. Uh, we did have an engineer come out prior to this happening, and uh, we have a report, and um, we didn't think it was actually going to collapse, um, you know, this soon. But it did sending those evacuated to the Salvation Army across the street for help. It's not overwhelming. It was kind of upsetting to us to see that these people all have to leave their houses. The future of those that depend on this building is unclear. Did I lock the door? You did. But on a day where all walked away with their lives, some say that in itself is a good place to start. And God is still blessed. In Meriden, Josh Scheinblum, News 8. Happy New Year. It's 2015. What the next 365 days will have in store, nobody knows. But if you've seen the movie Back to the Future 2, there are some who think that they have a pretty good idea. Yeah, here's looking at you, Mr. McFly and Doc Emmett Brown. Let me show you what I mean. Where are we? When are we? We're descending toward Hill Valley, California at 4.29 p.m. on Wednesday, October 21st, 2015. 2015? You mean we're in the future? Here's what I'm talking about. In the film, they have flat screen televisions that you can watch multiple channels on all at the same time. Well, we certainly have those, and that's not all. In the movie, there's also a scene where two characters talk to each other in real time by just looking at a screen. As it turns out in 2015, that's another thing they got right. And speaking of technology, although Apple gets all the credit for inventing the iPad, in the movie they show a similar device, one that you can even spend money on. Hi, Eric. Unfortunately, Back to the Future didn't get everything right. I need to bore you. Hoverboard? Where is he? Here. Well, 
that's kind of a bummer. But I got to imagine that there has been some sort of innovation in the skateboarding world since Back to the Future 2 was released. I'm here with Tim. He's the assistant manager over at Zoomies. Okay, tell us. Hoverboard, maybe? Not so much. There's been some small innovations in board shape and turning systems and all that good stuff, but uh, nothing that's really getting us off the ground yet. At the end of the day, it's still a board. For now, we're in Milford, Josh Scheinblum, News 8. The home may be where the heart is, but to discover it, you'll have to do some searching if you live on the wrong side of what was a very narrow snow band that hit parts of western New York just days ago. Yeah, well, it was twice as deep as this two days ago. There's a thick blanket of white that Mother Nature has piled so high, one may feel like they've been swallowed by a mountain. And I'm now higher than this sign. It's really unusual. Fun for kids, but what can feel like endless effort spent if your residence looks like Johnny Robbins's. So I called my son in Phoenix yesterday, and he goes, Man, that's insane, Dad. He says, I can't even believe this. I go, How's the temperature there? He goes, Oh, it's freezing. It's like 65 degrees. I go, Yeah, real bummer. He lives in the Lexington Green neighborhood of West Seneca. His home, so covered, he hired some helping hands to get him through the mess. Today we are all laborers. <laughs> well, technically four. Ready? One, two, three! Whoa. <laughs> However, where one problem ends, another may soon begin. Temperatures are rising, and all that melted snow will have to go somewhere. Snow don't melt here. It just builds up. Yet it no, seems no. few here are worried. This will just be a, maybe a little nuisance water. Even though this spot flooded less than one year ago. Who knows, this year we still have time, but I don't think we will have any flood. Why so confident there won't be a round two? Well, in the months since the last flood, there's been a berm constructed. And last time this nearby creek was completely frozen. Now, there's some water movement. There are environmental risks no matter where you live. Thank God it wasn't us this time. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> What's frustrating for some to understand, though, is why after 32 years of living in one place, this is all happening now. Yeah, I love Buffalo, man. It's the best. Residents may be skeptical, but there are already a number of emergency personnel who've already been mobilized in the case that a flooding event should occur. <laughs> Like a blade cutting through a sheet of white paper. It's just like a perfect, is it? Perfect path. A small Coast Guard tugboat embarks on a mission along the Connecticut River. This is a work hog, huh? Its goal is big to free ice that's jammed along the waterway. The big white, white, white spot open over there, you see it? This won't be an easy job. Come on, old girl. Because today, Temperatures are below freezing. Oh, that's my house. Three degrees. And the ice is thick. That's where I pushed up yesterday. Got snug, remember that? In the Coast Guard, a vessel like this is called a cutter. And it's a boat that is certainly designed for the job that it has at hand. Here in the Connecticut River, the ice can be up to 10 inches thick, and it's plowing through it, no problem. <laughs> Senior Chief Bosun's mate, Aaron Brewer, is overseeing operations. He's one of six seamen on board. We started right before the holidays. It froze up a little bit, broke that. And then uh, during the holidays, it uh, began to freeze again. It's a tedious process. It was fun for the first 20 minutes. But it was, you know, when, I, when we first started doing it. And then after that, it got kind of monotonous. Crush ice in one area so it can move to another. Start up north, break it, and then we'll have to go back down to continue to break it. Otherwise, we're just going to back it up right here. Often only to get stuck again. It freezes right back up. But Brewer says he and his crew feel a sense of duty doing this type of work because New England depends on it. We have potential with all these homes along the shoreline of flooding, uh, as well as uh, you know, coal barges and um, heating oil that transits up and down the uh, Connecticut River. They wouldn't uh, otherwise have access to the Connecticut River if we weren't breaking the ice to keep it free. Cutting ice to keep people safe and preserve a way of life. This is a very important aspect of what the Coast Guard does. In Middletown, Josh Scheinblum, News 8. 
Ask any high school girl, Katy Perry is one of the hottest music artists right now that you're going to find on any radio station or TV station. And now Katy Perry and Good Morning America have issued a challenge to high schools all across the country. Come up with a great video and Katy might just perform at your school. And at least here in Middletown, there is one high school that says they hear her message loud and clear. Every good story begins with a handshake. Welcome to Mercy. At least that's how it all started at Mercy High School when students there submitted an online video for Good Morning America's Roar with Katy Perry contest. How much practice did it take the first time to get um, the handshake down? I think we, we probably practiced that for like 15 minutes because it was like it was awkward that we weren't talking and then it was right. like who talks first. Get ready because the pack in. They're competing against thousands from all over the country, but two of the video's stars, Michelle Manzioni and Abigail Nolan, think they have a leg up on the competition because their student body's acting and dancing skills are top notch. And you're gonna hear me they are so confident in their talents, they even thought they could teach me. But as we soon learned, being a good performer and teacher are two very different things. You know, that handshake just didn't feel right. <laughs> I think we have to do that one again. <laughs> Hello there, welcome to Mercy. You have an excellent handshake. That's the one, that's the one, that felt good. But the wink that appears at the end of the video, a scene that brings their story full circle, I found a little easier to grasp. Make sure your face is like very relaxed. Okay. All right, and then you just. <laughs> did I nail that? Yeah, it, it felt. Was close. I felt like I did. It was close, I yeah. felt good, close. Yeah, it was close. All right, one more time. On three, one. Two, three. <laughs> I got goosebumps on that one. I got goosebumps. Good work. Woo. Now, ultimately, Good Morning America will select five finalists. They've already selected two, and at least over at Mercy High School and throughout the entire Middletown community, it's fingers crossed. We're live in the Middletown newsroom at the Middletown Press. Josh Scheinblum, News 8.